Hello there. Observer from 17 once again. This is my The Consequence DLC, Chapter 4, Part 2, Kuriyama Difficulty Video Walkthrough. I've missed that part off a few times, and you might be wondering why. I haven't actually said my intro for a while. Uh, the last four projects have all been uh, live playthroughs, so I haven't been saying it. So I'm a little bit rusty, which is kind of hilarious, even though I've said this intro so many times, so many more times than I ever thought I would say it when it first escaped my lips, but there you go. It's like anything else. If you don't constantly do something, you will kind of lose it, you know, to the, the mists of the back of your mind. But this, from now, this point onwards, we have a shotgun. It, it doesn't have two shells in it for balance reasons. I was mocking it in the video before, just playing really. It's a balance thing. They've made it so that every shot counts and afterwards you are vulnerable to a rather lengthy reload. And uh, if you see her, she ejects both shells. For, for some reason, it, it only says you have one shell in it, but it ejects two. So it's kind of like it's shooting both at the same time. But that being said, it can still miss. So you want to be very careful with this weapon. Uh, the maximum you can hold is six rounds. And do not worry about these sequences coming up because the game has a tendency of refilling you, which I think is really interesting considering Akumo difficulty did not do that. Like, if you got to a boss and you didn't have ammo, fuck you, is what the game said. On this, when you get to the boss, regardless of your ammo, it gives you full ammo. It's better design, but baffling coming off the incredibly harsh Akumu. However, this is the, the gauntlet of enemies with the shotgun I mentioned in the previous video. And as soon as we drop out of this, um, this crazy pipe, I'm going to start sprinting. And I recommend you do the same. So sprint towards this door. Hopefully you know where you're going. If you die, you should be okay, because you can just get to repeat it. You'll get to here. Shoot him. Don't dilly-dally. Sprint again. Get all your stamina back. Start sprinting. Jump towards the ladder here. Really important. Get up the ladder. Now that you're up here, one guy's going to move towards you. Put him down. Get the shell back in there. Another guy's going to be coming towards you as we progress onwards. Here he is. Put him down. Another shell back in the chamber. Pick up more shells. One last guy coming. Pick up as much as you can. Put him down. And then run past the next guy. Yeah, this is the fastest, most efficient way i found of getting through that particular sequence. Because once you hit this door, you're safe. Of course, you could probably kite other enemies and save rounds. But there's no real reason to do that. Uh, that is just a very efficient path, and it works, and it works. That's the third time it's worked for me, it worked fine. And now we're going to be moving into uh, a boss fight coming up, which, um, don't worry about it folks if you're curious, it's very simple. Ironically, I get a cleaner first boss, uh, where I, I don't think I take any damage, whereas on my first recording I did. And then the second part of it, I know damaged on the first recording, and on this one I get hit a few times, so it's, you know, it's just that no. bullshit nature of when you're recording. Of it's hilarious too, because the final phase, uh, I mess up going to the wrong um, hiding spot. If I'd have gone one across, I'd have been fine, but I didn't, because I made a mistake. And then on the final form, um, I, I think I miss a shot, and I end up getting clubbed. And on the first recording, I just backed up and I, and I didn't get hit. On this one, I tried backing up and I got hit, so it, it might have been a different swing. Suffice to say, boss doesn't do anywhere near the damage it needs to to be dangerous, so you can take the hits on the chin like a pro and have no real issue. But we, we have a few minutes to build up to it, and it's pretty simple. But I was saying about the channel, and I'm going to quickly run through it here. Bloodborne is coming to an end, folks. The next big project you're going to see is going to be a blind playthrough of The Witcher 3 on the hardest difficulty. I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be hard, it's going to be fun, and it's going to be long. Um, in the interim, there is going to be other things happening. There's going to be a continuation of projects that are already happening that I've put on hiatus a little bit. We'll be finishing Final Fantasy X, we'll be finishing Chaos Theory, we'll be finishing Kingdom Hearts, stuff like that. Wonderful 101. All these projects are still to come, folks, along with a Bloodborne walkthrough, which will help you destroy the game, and a maybe an S-ranking guide. Look at that. How the fuck did that miss? Madness. Um, a high-ranking guide for Hotline Miami 2 that hopefully won't get as molested by copyright IDs as the playthrough did, but we shall see. And uh, whatever 
Oh, and of course, a continuation of some of the uh, Street Fighter stuff that I've been doing. That right there, folks, is a pretty concise way of doing that corridor. Wait until they cluster up so that the single shell can knock as many of them down as possible, and you should be able to get to the elevator with maybe one or two shells fired. It doesn't really matter, because you're going to get all of them back for the sequence coming up. And the sequence coming up is probably easier, because for some reason the boss just... I, I don't really understand this, so here's my strategy. I walk towards the camera so I can see over her shoulder. And what will happen is the boss is going to have a go at us. When he glows red, it means it's the one you can hurt. As soon as you see it, shotgun it. Repeat. And then you've won. Do this four times or whatever it is, and you've won. On this recording, for some reason, he got out of this loop. Um, on the next one, I think they're all going to start walking around like idiots and they don't fall for it, so it lasts a little bit longer than it did the first time through. Yeah, so right now, I don't know if it's because I've walked into a bad spot or if the AI decided to do a different attack, but he doesn't do it. And I'm kind of thinking, do I go closer? What do I do here? So I, I keep to what I was doing before, but I'm moving towards him a little bit. And there it was. It did a little flash to tell me which one it was. And I put a shell in him. And then it goes back to normal now, of him chasing me down. There he is. And that's the last one. There's your checkpoint. And now is the the real fight. So that he's going to summon Streets of Rage-esque. Two clones of Kidman. One of them grabs you, the other one hits you with an axe. The axe one is easy, because you can dodge it. The grabber is a little trickier because she grabs and it's an animation and it's hard to dodge an animation because it's already happening. My strategy is simple. Depending on how many shells you've got left, go around this room at the beginning picking shells up. Get yourself a nice stock. All the while, as long as you're moving, they will have a tough time hitting you. That right there is unfortunate. That is one of those moments where if this was a one-hit kill, and I actually got two-piece there which was interesting while she was grabbing me. Um, very strange, but don't worry. Um, look how much life it took off, two hits from them. It took off nothing. So, I recommend headshots. I know that sounds obvious, but um, on my first recording, I shot these ladies much more than I shoot them in this one, and the difficulty is no different. So I assume hitting them in the face is the, the quicker way of doing this. But just be aware, they move erratically in front of you, and sometimes they can literally move in front of you and stop and grab you before you have chance to respond. It's a little cheap, but it's not painful, so it doesn't matter in the grand scheme. The darkness is not a problem either, because you can see the glowing veins. So, just get some ammo, load your gun, turn around and shoot them. That is literally all we're going to do here. We're going to circle, we're going to wait, we're going to turn, we're going to shoot. If you can line them up so they're both together, you'll do it quicker. But you can't control that. It's 100% the AI and what they want to do. Right now, I think they line up a little bit. No, it's coming soon though. So there's another shot on her face. Clipped a little bit there on the geometry. There's a kill. Whenever they do the backflip, it's a kill. She tried to grab me and she missed, and now she's dead. Once you've done that, boss fight's over. The last boss is, uh, is really simple. Bizarrely simple, actually. So they give you two spots here to refill ammunition, just in case you need it. And I'm going to make a mistake in the next room, which you're going to avoid with my knowledge. If you go to the right... What I didn't realise, you see, is... I thought if you were in, online, with the the things you hide behind... I didn't think the, the tide of geometry hurt you. I thought you were fine, but you have to hug it, because it actually does. So, here's my mistake. As we push forward here, you want to go to the one on the right. Not this one, the one to my right. If you do that, you'll have enough stamina to get to the one on the far right, and you won't do what I'm about to do. So I commit to this one thinking I'm f I'm safe in the line of it, and you're not. So that's a mistake. And then all this weird shit starts happening that I've never seen before, so I'm like, oh, fuck this up. But how do you kill yourself in this scenario? I'd love to restart so that you didn't have to watch this, but it had taken 20 minutes to kill me because the difficulty's so easy. So instead, I just commit to it, it looks sloppy, it is what it is. This phase, wait for the hand to rear up, shoot the scar, and then you're okay. I take a big hit, it does no damage because this difficulty is a joke. Then wait for the hand to rear up again, it's going to hit me again. That time, a lot more damage, that's a little bit more interesting. That's what it should be every time. But two shots on each hand, and this is the end of the fight. One shot on the dude, and... 
kind of disappointing, really. This could be really interesting and really tricky too, but it isn't. And you'll either like that or you won't. But here's the final shot. That is the end of the DLC, folks. The only thing left to do here is to walk up to this particular individual and shoot him, which I think is uh, really good cinematography. I love the angle here. Very creative. You're not going to see a results page with the achievement popping because that was in the previous one. Uh, I did this via New Game, uh, New Game Plus, sorry, and Chapter Restart. Of course, there's no upgrades or anything like that. There's nothing inherited, so it doesn't make any difference. Uh, it just sucks that you don't get to see the first attempt because the first attempt, I got grabbed by the the dude on the very first part of the boss fight, but then every fight after that was clean. Uh, I didn't get touched. Um, I think the ladies might have grabbed me once, but the last bit, flawless. Because it's not hard, guys, it's just stylish, I guess. But that is the last you will see of the Evil Within on the channel until the Keeper DLC. I have no idea what that DLC will be, but I'm excited for it nonetheless. The only thing left to do here is just say goodnight to this guy. Thank you for watching. You take care now.